Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title and the intro, we are going over this scope right here that's mounted up on my M249 and this scope right here, which has been used on several different uh, carbines throughout the review process. So what is it? It's the new Primary Arms PLX, so Platinum Series compact one to eight first focal point scope and there are three different reticle options basically there is the acss raptor in both yards and and uh, meters and then there is a mill version just a straight mill version as well the reticle is awesome and this scope has a ton of features going for it um, i was actually just talking to a bunch of like-minded friends the other day and they asked me you know hey i'm looking to pick up a low power variable optic for my like go to war rifle my budget is two thousand dollars what would you recommend this was my answer so i think that tells you i think pretty darn highly of it and i suppose we will get into why that is but before we actually dig into the details of the actual scope itself i do want to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is sdi or the sonoran desert institute for folks that don't know they offer online degrees and certificates in things that will help you get into the firearms industry whether it be uh, wanting to work in a gun shop own a gun shop gunsmithing anything related to the gun industry they can help you out if you don't know where to start so definitely check them out and now let's dig into it Getting into the details of the scope, we'll start here at the rear and work our way forward. We do have our adjustable eyepiece here. What that does is allow you to focus the reticle to your eyes. Everybody's eyes are different, um, so it allows you to do so. It's uh, knurled, so it's very easy to move if you actually get a good hold of it, but there is resistance, which is exactly what you want for these type of devices. So like I mentioned, it is a one to eight. In every way that it can be a true one power, this scope is a true one power. It is as fast as anything I've used to date. Uh, so very good in terms of actual one power clarity and speed. And you can see we have the one marked on there. And then we have our throw lever, which is bolted on there. They also offer a replacement piece for this that can kind of like flip down and flip out. And it's larger when it's flipped out and it's smaller when it's flipped down. Uh, so that is an option as well. But of course, that is the eight power. You guys can see where it is at on the scope. And that is the one power. So probably just under 180 degree in terms of throw. If you don't want to use that piece at all because you're afraid it'll get snagged on stuff, um, you absolutely can take it off and just use the actual ring itself because again, it has good knurling on there. The body on this scope is a 30 millimeter scope, which is a departure from their previous PLX 1 to 8 first focal plane. This one right here is a 34 millimeter mount. This is still available, um, but obviously going to a 30 millimeter makes it more uh, lightweight and then also gives you more mount options. There's plenty of 34 millimeter mounts out there, but there's a lot more, uh, obviously 30 millimeter. So there is that. Uh, looking at the actual markings on it there, we have the direction that you're actually moving the reticle when you're zeroing it, which I like. So it tells you which way you're going when you're behind the gun. You don't have to get up and look around it for both windage and elevation. Scope caps, good knurling on there. And each click, I'll put it near the microphone. Hopefully the microphone picked that up, but it has very, very tactile uh, clicks. There's no way you're gonna not know you're moving it. Um, and then of course, since it is a low power variable optic, it is not designed to be used like dialing in, but that 0.1 mil will let you get a very precise zero, which certainly is nice. And then of course, put your turret caps on and you're good to go. The illumination settings right there are one through 10, and they also have the intermediate position, which I like. Uh, so that way, if you wanna have it at the brightest setting possible, you can just leave it between nine and 10 and just rotate it one way, and then your illumination will come on. Is it daylight bright? Well, the photos I took of the reticle that you guys may be seeing throughout this review, I literally picked the most bright part of the day in terms of going through the light going through the uh, optic itself. So in that type of scenario, no, it's not daylight bright. However, right now, like, Obviously with the sun going down, it's absolutely daylight bright and will draw your eye to it. Uh, we'll get into the reticle here a little bit later, but it is powered by a CR2032 battery, uh, which is again, very, very common. If you're wondering, this is the primary arm. So I believe it's the PLX mount, which it is very good, very durable. I like the mount a lot. It does 
not always come with it. That said, if you use the uh, code Mr. Guns and Gear, you will get a free mount with any of the ACSS optics out there. So uh, definitely some differences between the old one for sure. If you guys want to see a comparison video on that, let me know. Regardless, uh, with that aside, let's delve into the reticle. In terms of the reticle itself, we are going to focus on the ACSS Raptor versions rather than the mill version. So basically, if you look at the reticle itself, in the first focal plane mode there, it is basically using the crosshairs on the edges, the four crosshairs pushing in. They're very large, and what that does is it allows it to be very fast on 1x. With a first focal plane scope, a lot of times it's slower on 1x because that reticle tends to be very small. With this one, those four crosshairs definitely draw you into the center on 1X very quickly. Of course, it is etched and illuminated on Japanese HD glass, high definition glass, and uh, just a fantastic 1X uh, sight picture uh, compared to a lot of the other offerings out there. And then if we zoom all the way into 8X, of course, anywhere in there, the actual uh, reticle will be correct because it's first focal plane. So any of your ranging and things like that are accurate whether it be on 1X or on 8X or anywhere in between. So we have our Chevron, which of course is your aiming point, and then the outer circle, which is designed for speed. It's also designed for leads. So uh, basically on the left and right side, it is 8.6 miles per hour, which is the average you know, uh, jogging running speed if you want to shoot a moving target. That's standard across the military. And then, of course, if we go down, the bottom of that chevron is going to be your hold point at 200 yards. The top of the line, uh, center line there, is going to be 300 yards. And then after that, we're at 400 yards or meters, again, depending on which option you get. Going on down, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. On the sides there, uh, you have our wind holds. So we have 5, 10, and 15 mile an hour wind holds at the various distances down the line. And then moving over to the... Uh, stadia lines on the left and the right we have both half value and full value ranging so basically you can range someone from the waist up because a lot of times people who are need to be shot rather don't want you to see them so a lot of times they hide so if you can get a you know waist up shot uh, on them and range estimate them you can do that or if they're standing you can use the full length of the bars that of course goes all the way out to 300 yards to 800 yards for that ranging capability additionally you'll see there on the top line and the bottom line as well as on the uh, windage lines on the extreme sides there you also have mill capabilities built into it uh, additionally the space between the bars that you use for ranging um, on the sides there are also one mil apart and the little tick mark in the middle is half a mil. So that way those of you who are familiar with the mill system can use it, um, but you do not need to, which I think is one of the most important things about these uh, ACSS reticles. No math is needed. You don't need to take your eye off the target in order to engage. Everything is done within the reticle, so it's very fast. And also, again, you don't lose the opportunity to make a shot that you might lose if you're off to the side doing some math. I think earlier in the video I might have rolled in a chart, but if not, I'll roll it in again right now. And I did mention that, you know, somebody asked me, what would you pick under $2,000? I said this. And honestly, if somebody asked me that under $3,000, this would be it as well. Now, I realize that seems somewhat preposterous, but I'm telling you, it is just a simply fantastic scope. The clarity and the brightness of it when you look through it, even in low light, but especially even in daylight, it almost looks brighter than it is outside. I realize because of math, <laughs> that's impossible, but I'm telling you that's what it looks like. It's the clearest LPVO I've ever seen, ever used to date, and I've used a lot of the high-end ones, and some of them are comparable. This is better than some of them and at a fraction of the price point. So uh, in terms of value proposition, when you pair that with the ACSS reticle options, you can kind of see why, if you're a fan of the ACSS system, which who isn't, um, why this is exactly what I would pick uh, for anybody looking for a scope for that role with that particular price point on there. So it's fantastic. Honestly, this video could be 30 minutes long and we could get into the minutia of everything, but I think we've covered most of that in previous videos. Um, honestly, guys, it's just simply an awesome awesome optic. It's expensive, I get that, but for the features that you get with it, I think it is very inexpensive for that uh, proposition. Made in Japan, of course, um, so for those of you guys who are anti-Chinese made optics, cool. You don't have to worry about that with this particular one. And uh, honestly, guys, 
I don't know what else to say besides if it's in your budget, this is what I recommend 100% at this point in time in 2022. It's the best one to eight that I've used to date and it's not even close. So uh, with that, if you have any questions, you can post them down below in the comment section. You can also post them over at my various social media sites that you see here on your screen. Uh, additionally, if you like this type of video and you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you've done that, hit the notification bell. If you've done that and you're still not seeing two to four videos a week, make sure you're uh, signed up here on my email list. You can sign up at the website here on your screen. Uh, that email goes out once a month at most and it has all the videos since the previous month's email has gone out. Additionally, if this thing goes on sale or anything like that, as it recently did, you can be notified by that at my various social media sites or in my daily deals email. Uh, that email goes out every day as the name implies and it has six or seven of the best deals that I find around the internet. If it's in that email at that time on that day, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere. So that way it saves you guys some time because you don't have to do the looking because I do the looking for you and also saves you guys some money because again, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet. And with that, we're going to close the video out. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.